Hello and welcome to this video on fractional powers and by that I just mean the power also known as the index is a fraction. How do we evaluate expressions like this? Now let's suppose I had the square root of 9 times the square root of 9. Well we know that the square root of 9 is 3 so we've got 3 times 3 which is 9. So when you times the square root of something by itself the square root just disappears. Now we could write that 9 as 9 to the power of 1. Now what if we said we wanted 9 to the power of something times by 9 to the power of something is also equal to 9 to the 1. And we want these two things to be the same, just like these two things are the same. Well remember, when we times two power expressions, we add the powers. So if we've got these two numbers which are the same, and when you add them you get 1, what plus itself gives you 1? Well it's half, isn't it? We know that half plus half is equal to 1. And that is the same. These must also be the same. So 9 to the half is equal to the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. So when we have a power of a half, we square root. We could also show similarly that if we had a number to the power of a third, what do you think that would do? If we have a power of half, 1 over 2, that does the square root, then the power of 1 over 3 would be the cube root. So the cube root of 8, which would be equal to 2. So 9 to the power of half absolutely does not mean 9 times half. It means that we do the square root. If you have a power of a third, it does the cube root. A power of a quarter would be the fourth root, and so on. So let's use it to answer these initial questions. We've got 1a, 25 to the power of a half. The power of half just means the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. Next one, 36 to the half, that just means the square root of 36, which is 6. We've also got 27 to the power of a third. And we know when we do a power of a third, that does the cube root of that number, so the cube root of 27. What cubed gives you 27? Well, it's 3. And then D, 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Now, this is a bit harder because we've now got a number in the numerator of that fractional power. And the way we do it is we could write it, and you don't need to do this every time, you could write it like this, 8 to the power of a third squared. Because if you think about it, when we have a power expression to a power, we would multiply those powers together, and a third times 2 is 2 thirds, so that is the same as that. But that means we can now do 8 to the third, which we already know from earlier is 2, you do the cube root squared, and that is equal to 4. So basically, whatever the denominator is of that fractional power, you do the nth root of that, so it's 3, you do the cube root, and then you do whatever you have left to the power of whatever's in the numerator. So in this case, you squared it. So let's do more of those. If we had 25 to the power of 3 over 2, well, we observe first that there's a 2 in the denominator, so we do the square root of 25 first, which is 5, but we've still got that power of 3 in the numerator, so we've got 5 cubed, and then 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5 is 1, 2, 5. And what about f? We have 32 to the power of 3 fifths. So this time we have to do the fifth root of 32, so what to the power of 5 is 32? Well, it's 2. 2 to the power of 5 is 32, so we have 2, and we're still doing it to the power of 3, and that numerator 2 cubed is equal to 8. Now, we want to evaluate these things with negative and fractional powers. We're going to have to combine multiple skills here. Now, 4 to the power of minus half, do you remember in the video on negative powers, when we have a negative power, we do 1 over whatever we had without the negative. So we do 1 over, and we do 4 to the power of half without the negative. So it's 4 to the power of half. So always do the negative power first. If you've got it there, it makes it simplest. Now, 4 to the power of half, that's the square root of 4, which is 2. And therefore, we get an answer for half. What about 2b? We've got 27 to the minus 2 thirds. So, we first deal with a negative, it's 1 over 27 to the 2 thirds. And then we know when we have something to a uh, fractional power where we've got a number of the numerator as well, we first do the 27 to the cube root, so it's 1 over, well the cube root of 27 is 3, so it's 1 over 3 squared, because we've still got that 2 in the numerator, and 1 over 3 squared, don't leave it like that, we need to write 1 over 9. 
what about C? We've got 16 to the power of negative 3 quarters. So we first deal with a minus, it's 1 over 16 to the 3 quarters. Then we next deal with the denominator in that fractional power, so we do the fourth root of 16. What to the power of 4 is 16? Well, it's 2, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So it's 2 to the power of 4, we've still got that 3 in the numerator, and 2 cubed is 8, so the answer is 1 over 8. Now, we're getting even harder, we've got fractions to a fractional power. So we've got a fractional base to a fractional power. So, 81 for 25 to the power of a half. Well, we know that to the power of half just means square root it, so the square root of 81 over 25. Now, one of the laws of thirds is that if you have square root a division, you just square root the top and you square root the bottom. So we can square root the 81 to get 9, and we can do the square root of 25 to do 5. So that one was relatively simple. What about this? We've got 27 over 64 to the power of a third. Now we know a power of a third cube roots this, so we cube root the numerator, cube root the denominator, so the cube root of 27 is 3 over the cube root of 64, which is 4. Now we've got a fraction to a negative fractional power, so 9 over 4 to the power of minus half. Well, we saw in the previous video, when we have a fraction to a negative power, it flips the fraction. So, we're going to instead have 4 over 9 to the power of a half. And then we can just do this fraction to the power of a half. That means we square root the top and the bottom. That's 2 over 3. So, it's just putting the pieces together. And then we've finally got this one. 27 over 8 to the power of minus 2 thirds. This was an exam question once. So, we first deal with a negative power. That flips the fraction inside, not the power, it flips the base. So we've got 8 over 27 to the power of, now we've got 2 thirds because we've dealt with that negative power. Because there's a 3 at the bottom, we cube root this, so it's 2 over 3, but we still got that power of 2 at the top. And then that's just equal to 4 over 9, because 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. Now we've got these last few here. We want to simplify first 25 x to the 4 y key to the power of a half. Now we've seen before that when we have a single term to a power we just do each of these things within the term to that power. So we do 25 to the power of a half, that's the square root of 25 which is 5. And then we've got x to the 4 to the half. Well when we have a power expression to a power we just multiply the powers 4 times half is 2. So it's x squared and we do the same here, y cubed to the power of half, it's a power to power, 3 times half is 3 over 2, or if you like, 1.5, but we prefer uh, fractions in algebra. And then b, we've got 1, 2, 5, x, y to the 12, all to the third. So we do each of these things to the power of a third. 125 to the third, that's the cube root of 1, 2, 5, which is 5, because 5 cubed is 1, 2, 5. And then we've got x to the power of a third, which is just x to the third. And we've got y to the 12 to the third. We've got a power to a power, we times the powers, 12 times a third is 4. So it just simplifies to that. And then finally, determine k if 3 root 3 is equal to 3 to the k. So we have to write this as a power of 3. And the way we do that is we have to kind of do laws of indices backwards. We know that anything to the power of a half does the square root of that. So if we've got the square root of something, it means we could write it as that thing to the power of a half. So 3 times root 3, because that's what that means, 3 times root 3. So it's 3, which we could write as 3 to the 1. And we're timesing by the square root of 3, which is 3 to the half, because we know a power of a half would do the square root. Now we can simplify that because when we times power expressions, we add the powers. So we add one and a half, which is 1.5, or we could write three over two as an improper fraction. So we've got three to the three over two is three to the k. The base is the same, so the powers must be the same. So that means that k is equal to three over two. And then finally, part b here, we've got two to the k is equal to eight over root two we do exactly the same thing. So, 8 over root 2, we write these as powers of 2, so we compare it with this. 8 is 2 cubed, obviously. 
Root 2 is 2 to the half, because a power of a half gets you the square root. And then we can subtract these powers, because we're dividing these power expressions. 3 minus half is 2.5, or 2.5, or the best way to write it is an improper fraction, which is 5 over 2. So if 2 to the 5 over 2 is 2 to the k, the powers must be the same, so k is equal to 5 over 2. And we're done.